the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. For the joy that was set before you, there will always come a point in your life where you will need to build capacity. Capacity. It says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, there is only one explanation. Your strength. Many believers are wonderful people, but our spiritual stamina is small. Anything just blows you and you are out of the way. God, you didn't do this and that's it. But it says, be steadfast, immovable. There is a level of balance, stamina. That was one of the blessings of the men of David. Among the men of David, one of the blessings was that one could dig his feet on the ground. In other words, no matter what you do, I will not move. I can defeat you from one spot. Are we together now? Please sit down for a while. Good evening, everybody. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. We we'll still get back to our discussion. These are nights of encounters. Ephesians chapter 3. Let's start from verse 7. Paul is speaking. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of the saints was this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Nine. And to make how many men? There is a grace given that when you come under the influence of that grace, you must see. I hope you understand the story. He's saying a grace was given to me and that by the privilege of God's power, the effectual working, he gave me a grace that when people come under the influence of that grace, he can make all men see. There is a grace that can take away blindness, regardless of your level of education. Listen carefully. Regardless of your level of exposure. You see, there are things in life that you have to be educated to understand. There are things in life you have to be wealthy to understand. There are things in life you have to be poor to understand. There are things in life you have to be ignorant to understand. But there is a grace that can make all men see. Regardless of your level, regardless of your background, whether you can speak English or not is not the issue. The grace has capacity to quicken your understanding. He says, and it shall make him of quick understanding. If the matters of the spirit were left to educated people, then those who didn't have the privilege of formal education will be out of God's program. If it were left only to the rich, then the poor will not have a chance. Are we together? If he was left only to the exposed and enlightened, then those that did not have that kind of privilege will not have anything. But thank God for his grace. That when he pours his spirit is upon all flesh. And that this grace can make all men see what is the fellowship. It's the word koinonia. Partnership. The sharing. Drinking from the same vessel of the mystery. So you can partake of a mystery, not just an anointing. You can partake of the grace that has made a man to see. And you will see the same thing. The Lord began to deal with us yesterday on hosting his power. We're still going to explore 
along power and impartation God began to adjust our understanding to see and understand the dynamics of true spiritual power. Isaiah chapter 35. My assignment tonight is first and foremost to help us by the Spirit understand the value of spiritual empowerment. Because until you recognize the value for a king, the, the energy to pursue is not there. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll read the first six verses. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it the excellency of camel and sharon they shall see the glory of the lord and the excellency of our god verse 3 he says strengthen ye the weak hands he says and confirm the feeble knees verse 4 say to them who are of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. As a result, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. The Bible paints a picture of what can happen to a person and an environment when the power of God is introduced. Many believers have not been trained to see the value of spiritual empowerment. For many believers, spiritual empowerment is, is, is an elective that you choose if you are interested in doing ministry. So if you do not have any passion for ministry, it's unnecessary, it's a nuisance. All I need is just the word. But the word did not make any meaning until the word was empowered. You are not a blessing until you are empowered spiritually. You read from Genesis to Revelation. There was no one who had capacity to do God good without God anointing him. God will make a man, build that man, teach that man the systems of the kingdom. And then when all is said and done, among the many things, he will grant access to his anointing. I hope you know that God's power, God's anointing is not the same anointing that God works with is what he gives you. So that your possibilities can match. Because man does not have in himself the capacity to produce God's dimension of results. If it is the Lord's doing, then it is marvelous. If it's not marvelous, it was your doing. You don't clap for me for walking. It's human to walk. There's nothing supernatural as it were about walking. But when you begin to manifest a dimension not given to men, it proves that there was an energy that was outsourced. No one was allowed to serve in the temple without empowerment. No matter how silly the responsibility was, you needed empowerment. No matter how skilled you were, every time God would call a man, out of whatever it is that he does, they must be empowered. Including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Her carrying Jesus for nine months did not empower her. She had to join the 120 to wait until the spirit was it not the same spirit that put jesus in her womb but that did not empower her the bible is full of stories of people who were absolutely weak their humanity was so glaring but not for too long at a point in their life and in their experience they had a strange encounter with the spirit of the living then they were anointed and things turned around in their lives. There is no man of God 
who can produce God's dimension of results and be a blessing just being a wonderful humane human being there has to be a translation by the power of God are we together it is very very important Zechariah chapter 4 please and verse 6 the prophet is speaking here Zechariah 4 and verse 6 then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of God unto Joshua Selman saying not by might human strength nor by human power but it is by my spirit excelling in your business not by might nor by power but by my spirit doing the kind of ministry that will bring glory to jesus not by might nor by power getting a job not by mouth nor by power being favored not by might nor by power are you getting what i'm saying breaking a chain that was there before you were born there were people stronger than you that chain kept them there it is not by might nor by power but by my spirit you must learn early to give up on the strength of the flesh it will embarrass you and continue to recycle pain to your life for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. When a spirit is oppressing you, there is no machine that will diagnose it. Machines don't diagnose spirits. They diagnose the effect of their presence. But there is a word that is a discerner. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. In Isaiah chapter 61, the messianic prophecy, we know this theologically to be, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, in other words, this is the object, the motive, the motivation behind that. He had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. Then he says he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The opening of the prison to them that are bound. Every time I read this scripture, when I get to that prison part, it touches me. Who are these men in prison? Because they still walk around. Yet the Bible says they are not only tied, they are in prison. To open the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Then to comfort all them that mourn. Three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Look at this. You can give a man beauty. You can say, bring your ashes. I will change it for you. Like you tell somebody, bring dollars. I will give you naira. You actually can be anointed to see a man's life. You are not praying now and say God change his life. It is within my power. There is an agency that can turn your life around. That men can receive something from heaven that stops them from being human. You can look at a man with ashes, my brothers and my sisters. And within your power, according to the measure of grace, you look at that man and say, bring these ashes. I want to give you beauty. Like an award, like an exchange. And you say, go, you've had beauty. He will doubt it until his result shows. He steps out of that place. And all of a sudden, the scenario of his change and all this begin to change. And all that he sees is the glory of God. To give them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Look how men can become blessings to men. That something can come upon your life. When you see men mourning, you don't counsel, you don't sympathize. You tell them, I see you wearing a garment. It's only expressed in your tears. Let me take that garment away. And you can give them a garment of praise. That they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. 
God wants to be glorified through the empowerment of the saints. Please listen to me. It takes spiritual power to reign. It takes more than good intention. It takes more than good preaching. It takes more than a sincere heart. The days that we live in are evil days. Jesus himself revealed to us that there is something called the hour of darkness. The hour of darkness. Psalm 63. The value showing you and then we'll tie up a few things and pray tonight. You must desire sincerely the power of God. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. In my flesh longs for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Why am I seeking you? To see thy power and thy glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. Lord, I'm seeking you. There, is, there are things around my life that I know only your power can answer. I've tried to use human wisdom. I've tried to use certain things, but I know that I need to outsource an ability that is higher than me. Ah, happy is the man who is trusted with God's power. You will watch life come under obedience to Christ. But when you are not empowered, you can watch your family members go through the things that happen. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You see, everything that happens in our lives can be likened to movie actors. Behind every movie, I don't, I don't do movie, but at least I know a little about it. That when you are acting a movie or drama, there's someone called a director, correct? You may never have the privilege of seeing him. He is at the back scheming things. What you watch is the action, but there is a director. You slap this one twice. No, no, according to my script, you should slap him three times. That means that behind the various scenarios of our lives, there are systems and spirits orchestrating it. The disfavor, the closed door, the unnecessary hardship, the lack of church growth regardless of grace. We focus many times on the events. The events are like probabilities. They are infinite. Behind every one of them are these spirits. And the Bible says, how awe-inspiring are your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I once counseled an elderly man, very old man. And while I sat down listening to him, he barely spoke and he started crying. And I said, sir, just talk to me. What is the issue? And then he told me that all through his life, he has not known what people call victory. That this thing they call victory is strange to him. It's like a man being pregnant. He says, I, I, I don't know anything about victory. I said, why? He said he was never taught some of these things. And he was angry because his life refused to change. This kingdom is a kingdom where in many cases it is the power of God that speaks. And until the power of God speaks like the roaring of a lion, some challenges will not let you go. Please listen very carefully. I shared with you in this place, Koinonia, about a woman who was pregnant one time. And then this woman would go to bed and literally see monkeys all around her, Pastor. Monkeys. And she gave birth to a child and the child came out hairy physically like a monkey, dead. 
how many people have been prayed for here with HIV? Ask them how they got it. They said they came to me in a dream with an injection. Said this is HIV. Injected you in the realm of the spirit and it appeared physically. That means you can change something in the realm of the spirit and then wait for it like a movie too to happen physically. If it started in the realm of the spirit, it must be adjusted there. It doesn't make sense to come from the realm of the spirit and then you adjust it physically. Some things will never change with counseling. Hear me. Some things will never change with time. Some things will never change with advice. You will need a head-on collision with the power of God. There are families where nobody has risen to any level. The last person who tried to rise there because of the little revelation here and there that he got, when he was almost crossing, it drew him back. Power. The power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus knew the necessity of this. He said, tarry in Jerusalem. Don't make a mistake of leaving Jerusalem to start anything without empowerment. I've given you the lecture, but all that lecture will be nonsense if there is no power. I just gave you theory, but what you are going to be seeing there, oh dear, had they not listened to Jesus, you would meet a man called Bar Jesus. You would meet a young girl who was a sorcerer, and she will show you word of knowledge that you had not seen. Listen, let me tell you. The world that is out there is not exactly ignorant. It's just that the knowledge is demonic and diabolic. You know, many times when we teach like this, even me, I get uncomfortable sometimes because everything I say looks like a lie except that it is true. Hmm. It is true. It is true. Bishop Oyedepo gave a story that one time the church would not grow for a long time, regardless of the prayers that were offered. And then they were fasting just like this. Lord, why is the church not growing? And according to him, he said, the spirit of the Lord asked him to go out. And then he checked and saw that there was a blindfold over that ministry. And he cursed it in the name of Jesus and it rolled like a curtain. From that time, increase began to come. There are people, every good thing you do is misunderstood. It's not normal. Her man was begging. The king called it rape. There are spirits that make good things evil. You come for somebody's program to help him. They say, uh-huh, they have come. You don't come and they say, ah, something is wrong. Is a spirit. Let me tell you, when the devil wants to trap you down, only God can deliver you. Because anything you do will lead to the same result. They box Jesus with a question that both yes and no will put him in trouble. It was not the issue of answering correctly or not. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of God. Listen, let me tell you. There are many things you have discussed. It's time to bring them face to face with God's power. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power for exploits in the kingdom and that by the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. This is what happened to Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost but not with power. And when he was done fasting, the Bible says, and he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. This conference would not have done us justice if it leaves us with just information without power. It takes power to change your situation. It takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life. Just because God said it does not mean it will happen. There is an energy, there is an agency behind. 
He says his divine power has given us. His word authorizes his power to move. The power will not move until the word authorizes it. But when the word authorizes it and the power is not there, it will still be of non effect. The dynamics of manifestation is this. Listen, it is not just the union of the word and the power alone. It is that the word is what gives authority. And then the power is what manifests physically to create the change. God's energy, God's ability. Turning people's lives around. Changing people's situations. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed. Don't get too used to these scriptures. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about as a result of the power. Doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. This is a generation that needs the power of God. There are so many things that continue to challenge believers. We need a manifestation of the power of God. In one day, the issue of loyalty to God was settled when power came. Elijah said, let's stop arguing. Go up the mountain. Let's go to Mount Carmel. That the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And then he gave the prophets of Baal room to begin to do everything that they were doing. The Bible says from morning up until night. Do you know the highest dimension of their prayer was sacrifice? When everything failed, they started cutting themselves. He said, pray louder. Maybe he's sleeping. And Baal could not answer them. And then when it was the time of the evening sacrifice, there was a time when the angel of the Lord will come to the earth. Angels are not on the earth just all the time. They will respond to prayers. But there are activities on earth that make for the manifestation of the angelic. Do you know how Haman got the date to destroy Israel? I hope you know there was a date. Haman did not just say to destroy God's people carelessly. Through divination. A spiritual permutation was done and the exact date was there. That means every day is not conducive for everything. This is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Her man, through divination, found out the exact day. The same way there are divine appointments... There are also appointments of darkness. I heard a man of God share a very touching story. And when I heard that story, it really, really blessed me. He said there was a lady who was about to travel. She missed her flight. She felt so bad and cried that he, she missed her flight. Only for her to find out about maybe a, a few hours ago that the plane crashed. The family members were perplexed when they published the names of the people the name of the daughter was not there and they said so what happened she missed the flight and so she went to a train the train still crashed those kinds of people are appointed to die so it doesn't matter whether it's through plane or through this the devil will haunt you until what happens happens just when you think you are done with one breakthrough here is something but then it says to appoint unto them that mourn. The same way that you can put a date to a man's breakthrough and call it today. You can call something that should happen next week and give it a date today by the anointing. Samaria was never supposed to be delivered. The prophet gave the date for the deliverance. He was, he, listen. Elisha was not revealing something that would happen anyway. And maybe he was just privy to an advanced information. No. He said, by this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. If he didn't say it, the tomorrow will come and the cry will continue. And they will eat the child. The other child that they were arguing about. 
Do you know how many people's lives you will save when you are anointed? Do you know how many people you will save from going down the grave? Do you know how many people you will lift for going down the grave? There are many people today in the grave who had no business going there. If you're a minister here, please listen to me. We are in the days of his power. If you lack genuine spiritual power, please leave ministry. Just quietly leave ministry. You can find another ministry and help them. But I'm telling you the days that we live in will require genuine spiritual power. The distinguishing factor will be the power of God. Because people will come with burdens that no level of intelligence can solve. Paul said, and I, when I came to you, he said, remember Paul was not a dull man. So he was not trying to trivialize knowledge. He says, but when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power that your faith may not rest upon the wisdom of man, but upon the power of God. That you carry the power of the Holy Spirit like a drug and enter your house with it. You don't need to pray. Just enter. And all of a sudden, the foundations of your family begins to shake. What is going on in this family? There is a shaking. What dreams are we suddenly having? It's because someone who represents the ark entered that house. Akabarutasiakata. One week after your coming, suddenly three promotions without your prayer. One week after your coming, a strange infirmity that each people in your family gives way. This is proof that God is with you. Let me tell you this. The world is truly tired of our stories. Are we together now? And the impatience continues to grow. We need a generation of men and women, not just preachers. Men and women who understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Many of you are seated here right now. Buffeted by all kinds of challenges. And for many people, they think that the answer to those things, maybe is just some nice discussion with an intelligent man of God. There are times that you need the power of God. Some of you join the queue sometimes to see me. And while you are talking, I just say, it's okay. Don't worry. You are tired. Let me explain. I said, it's okay. I know what the problem is. No matter what other examples you will give, is the same spirit. Like you tell a doctor, the other day I fell down. Let me tell you the scenario that, he said, no, it's epilepsy. He said, no, let me tell you, he said, I found the problem. He said, Even if you say you fell from a bridge, it's still epilepsy. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. Working in me, it's God's ability. God's Hallelujah. This is why we're gathered tonight. This is why we continue to press. Listen. Joshua Selman cannot be in every home. Joshua Selman cannot be in every office. Joshua Selman cannot be in every school. Joshua Selman cannot be everywhere. There is a problem if he's everywhere. You are supposed to be an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom within the region that you are in. That means that when someone from the regions you have come from is contemplating and say, ah, I should come for koinonia, but maybe I'm challenged financially and the rest. You say, I bring you good news. That which is there is here. Here by the Spirit. He said, this is that. That, that.
that that the prophet spoke about this is it again this is that what is the problem i've been trying to see apostle why because things are not working in my family and then one word one word from you will open the gates this is what god is making and it has nothing to do with being a man of god or a woman of god by the time you carry the grace for favor and someone just comes and shakes you good morning sir and he thought he just shook a man and then he leaves and for that day he records breakthroughs in his life he will look for you and say please shake me again i don't know what you did i don't know what happened but you are like the ark of god in the house of obed edom it was dropped there just to let it be under the care of obed edom and in three months 90 days the life of a man changed because something was introduced jonah carried a spirit into a boat and people were about to die Jonah didn't pray. Jonah didn't preach. Jonah didn't talk. He was even sleeping. You don't have to be awake for grace to walk. Jonah was sleeping. Yet the anointing was working. That you can turn a man's life around by the spirit bringing glory to the name of the lord as an evidence a testament of the power of god but ye shall receive power Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 after that the holy ghost is come upon you you shall receive power not stories power i'm a businessman yes sir power I'm a politician. Yes, sir. You need more power as a politician than a preacher. A preacher has prayer ban. A politician does not have it. They can cover for you before you go for a retreat. But you are a politician. They hit you once you are gone. Listen very carefully. Let me tell you we are living in evil days. It is true. And you must sustain the stamina the spiritual stamina the empowerment how about wealth and increase remember the teaching that i did that you want to prosper and even your soul to prosper the devil says no way you choose one you can't have both either your soul prospers or your pocket prospers and you say no in god's economy we prosper as our souls prosper you don't sell your soul to prosper the world's way is that you sell your soul to prosper that was the exchange that was happening at the mountain give me your soul what shall it profit when it talks of profit the commodity of exchange is a man's soul and the world like pure water and hundred naira what shall it profit you if you use this to buy this the world soul trade by butter give me your soul i will give you access to the cosmos is god speaking to someone let me tell you something it takes the force of god's power for things to change the force of god's power and yesterday we spoke about one of the keys Let me just talk very briefly one area and then we will pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We spoke about one area, death. If you remember very carefully, that the price is death. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Thank you, my dear. Proverbs 23 and verse 26 my son first instruction give me your heart we dealt with that yesterday so we're switching to the next one and let thine eyes observe my ways 
He's teaching a man a secret here. Your eyes, your heart. Your eyes, your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. Listen to me. It's an anthem in this ministry that there is a relationship between your spiritual understanding and the manifestation of spiritual power. You know, most times people say there is power in the word of God and it's not a lie. But the dynamic, most people do not understand. They think that the word of God is just like a charm or a genie. And the moment you have it or recite it, it has power. No, no. In the parable of the sower, Satan came and carried the word and he was not shaking. He didn't die. He carried the word. Only God knows where he went with it. When Jesus finished fasting, the word finished fasting, Satan appeared and was talking to the word with power on him. He didn't shake under the anointing. He even held Jesus and took him to a mountain. He held the word with power on it. That the word of God can be made of non-effect. There is a system that releases the power of the word. Are we together now? The word of God is a compendium of his ways, his methodology, his systems. Hidden in the systems, when you understand and engage accordingly, then you release the power that lies therein. This is very, very important. For most people, we just think that the word of God is in the recitation of it like a memory verse. Or in the chanting of it like a charm. You know how traditionalists would chant something in front of a masquerade. No. No. The sons of Sceva were speaking what would be in the similitude of scripture. But the demons did not leave. You have to understand this. And let your eyes observe my ways. That means that every part I walk is a pattern you should pay attention to. Observe my ways, how restoration came. Observe my ways, how speed came. Observe my ways, why Satan could not defeat me. He said, be observant. Before you speak, ponder, sila, think by the wisdom of the spirit. Obtain grace and understanding to discern. You can successfully replace the word observe there with the word discern. Discern my way. We came from the same background. What did you do that suddenly brought favor? Observe my ways. There was something I did that the natural eyes cannot see. We were born the same day. What has happened to you that you have such an investment of the spirit? Observe my ways. When you give me your heart, observe my ways. My path are the paths of pleasantness. Observe my ways. There is a way that cement writes, the Bible says, unto a man. He says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus said, I am the way, the authorized methodology for results. It is my path. When you follow it, the results are guaranteed. The primary assignment of any man of God, after getting people saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, is to stimulate spiritual enlightenment and understanding by opening them to the ways of god the methodology the modus operandi please listen very carefully things don't just work because they are written in the bible things don't just work because god said they should work behind his speakings are his systems listen to me beyond words you have to see the lines that connect this is where the spirit of revelation, of wisdom, and of understanding comes. You have to pray for understanding. The utopian Enoch had his Bible open. He was just coming from church on a chariot on his way to go back home. And the spirit of the Lord took Philip and says to join that chariot. And then he even saw that he was reading the messianic prophecy. He said, who is this man? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Was it he more about someone? He says, understandest what thou readest. How can I accept some man teach me? And then he began to explain. To make all men see. 
there is a grace that as the exegesis of scripture is as the bread is broken your eyes suddenly see this is it this is where my family is i've seen it the word of god becomes for you like a compass it shows you where you are and where you need to be and when you have eaten and found it it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to your soul behind the results that we seek it's not only the word of god but an understanding of the system allocated for it please listen to me just because the anointing produced result in an area does not mean it will produce result in an area the anointing flow through the channel of your understanding to produce that result and so the same anointing will be profitless if you are barren of spiritual understanding imagine with me for a moment that you have a tap that has potentials to gush out a lot of water and then you have a host you can use it and you can guarantee that a garden will be watered what waters the garden is not the host but without the host the water will not reach the garden that host is your understanding that is the basis of your faith faith is the confidence that you get based on god and the integrity of his word and the action you take to validate that confidence it comes through understanding understanding is a real miracle it's greater than rising up from a wheelchair and he breathed upon them he opened their understanding we need to have a lot of understanding for the results that we seek to command. And I have dished mysteries upon mysteries in this kingdom. One of the strange mystery, the mystery of praise, the secret to exemption. Aye. Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed. There is a kind that goeth by praise. There is a kind that goeth by fasting. There are many kinds. There are dynamics of their operation. And the Bible says Paul and Silas after praying, they praise. And it says all doors open. Not some. All doors open. Praise can open doors. That a man can, he says, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. We've had testimonies in this house where people will lock themselves and write challenges that only God can solve. And sing praises and dance like fools in the presence of that request. And by morning, God will say, you can't do this for me. Was it not a girl's dance that removed a prophet's head? What Jezebel could not do, Herodias, the daughter, did it in a dance. Dance during a man's birthday. He said, what will you want? Even to half of my kingdom. Consulted with her evil and wicked mother who said, remove the head of that prophet. And his head went for it. Do you know the mysteries allocated for the results that you seek? In a dance, not in a complaint. Praise in a dance. Ah, madam, you're going to lose this pregnancy. From what we are seeing, there is problem. Praise in a dance. Your certificate, everywhere you have taken for a job, they say, sorry, sir, it's too late. Sorry, you are too old. Sorry, you are too young. Sorry, it's women we are looking for. You are a man. Sorry, it's men we are looking for. You are a woman. Sorry, we are looking for Yoruba people. What tribe? I'm Hausa. Sorry, it's Northerners we are looking for. You carry that thing and bring it before God. And say, where is the God of Israel? Where is my job, oh God? Let my dance bring it. You can dance like someone in a bar. There's no miracle for that one. But you can dance the dance with understanding. Lord, I'm dancing before the God who can change my life. I'm dancing before the one who has all power. How about the mystery of prayer? God's authorized system of legislature over a territory. You don't legislate by discussion. 
No. When you want to enforce the value system of God over a spiritual climate, the mechanism allocated for that is prayer. You fortify a spiritual border through the ministry of prayer. He spake a parable. Are you learning something now? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. The mystery that gives you direction over affliction is prayer. It's in prayer that you understand what is going on. You don't pray after you have understood what is happening. Whatever you understand can be aberrated by your pain. It is prayer that purifies the revelation. Is any man afflicted? Not let him understand. Let him pray. Lord, I don't know what is happening, but let prayer filter this thing. And you lock yourself and while you are praying, suddenly the maze, the purity of the revelation comes to you. Prayer. When it was time for Esther to deliver the people, she said, set yourself, Israel, fast. I will also fast with you as I go to the king. It was a matter of life and death. There are mysteries in this kingdom. One of it is the mystery of your seed. Huh. The mystery of your seed. Now, I know that it may have been abused here and there, but very few believers understand the power of seed faith. It's not just some Pentecostal gibberish to collect money out of people. Whoever manipulates people, he has God there to judge him. But let me tell you, there are times you are tired of a dimension and you can connect a seed to your faith huh? and smash every Goliath down to pieces with your faith. Seeds have worked wonders in my life. Seeds have worked wonders in this ministry. There was a year I've shared with you where God gave an instruction to sow everything to empty every money in this ministry. Everything. That's suicidal for a man of God to do. Very suicidal. If your ministry is just a prayer group, you can afford that risk. Because whatever it is, the people will understand. And with careless, reckless abandonment, we did that. And in one week, it didn't pass seven days. God did a wonder that till forever will not recover from. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, a time will come when you have to keep quiet and let your speed continue speaking. It's a mystery in the spirit. The prophetic is a mystery that you engage under certain circumstances. Every time the Bible talks of restoration, it does not talk of anything other than the prophetic. Read your Bible. Every time there was a loss in the Bible, it was the ministry of the prophetic that brought it back. Whether it was the axe head, whether it was the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, no matter what it was, the moment the prophetic came, then there would be restoration. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Is God speaking to you tonight? So every challenge that we have, that we stand with tonight, is at the mercy of the power of God, but released through the host of your understanding. Listen to me. It's not just about power, power, fall on me. Mm -mm. When power falls on you, it's the same thing like splashing water everywhere. It must be coordinated through understanding to be channeled to the area where the results are needed. Just wanting power at random without understanding is the same way you fetch water and just throw it everywhere and expect it to coordinate itself into your mouth. There is a cup that fetches that water and it doesn't go to your head, it doesn't go to your legs. You direct it where that water needs to go. When you are bathing, even if it's a shower, you don't stand anywhere and it touches you. You position the water. It is not water but assignment to know where your head is or to know where your face is or to know where the soap is. It's their assignment to release water. 
It's your assignment to work with your plumber and make sure that water is in a position that can get to every part of your body. So the situation happening with you in that bathroom, the water body is not aware. There was something about the way you turn the whole thing and it's not reaching you. Understanding gives value to power. Most people have power, but they don't have understanding. So it cannot be coordinated to produce results. We like power because of the charismatism that comes around it. But the efficiency of the power of God is produced on the platter of understanding. There's water in a well. Please help me with this. Look at this. Every well has water. But you don't stand in front of a well and bend your head down to drink it. You do that, you are going to fall down and die. The water that was supposed to bless you is now the reason for your death. But the water was packaged in a bottle. And the bottle, the person that designed this bottle designed it to enter your mouth. That's why this is not where you drink from. Are we together? He looked at the size of your mouth and made sure that the bottle will be able to enter there. Now the water can benefit you because the channel gave it coordination. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are many people, what you may need may not be more power. Truly the power is resident within you. But understanding is what will give it, will channel it accordingly to produce the breakthrough that you need. And I have seen this again and again with many believers. They are not knowledgeable on spiritual things. They lack spiritual intelligence. And yet they want the power of God. The divine power of God is like electricity. But you channel it to do the things for you that it wants to do. Trying to receive fresh air from a keyboard is not profitable. Yet it's the same power that powers a keyboard that powers this. So I must understand the dynamics of his conversion. To know if I want fresh air, it's a fan I look for. It's still the same divine power. It is the same divine power. But sometimes it is not expressed in prayer. It's expressed in a dance. Sometimes it's not just expressed in a dance. It's expressed in agreement. Sometimes it's not just expressed in agreement, it's expressed as you quote scripture and speak to the air. Sometimes it is expressed through submitting to a prophetic grace. Regardless of the dimensions, it is still his divine power that makes for that result. Listen to this. Tomorrow is our miracle service. And many of you see the things that happen in the miracle service. And sometimes you wonder, why do you have to do this? There are times that I may call on specific people and minister. And then at the same time, minister to everybody over the same case again. You see, it is his divine power. But the system of operation, there are others. Until the worship team raises a song, they will not be blessed. The nature of their challenges will require worship. The power of God will flow through the instrument of worship. There are certain people that God's divine power will flow through creativity. When it has to do with wealth, his divine power does not flow through the channel of prayer. So if all you know is prayer, you will heal the sick but remain poor. His divine power is trapped by your bankruptcy of knowledge. You must give his power channels to flow through understanding. The more you have spiritual understanding, the more you are giving his divine power channels to flow to the various faculties of your life. It matters that we have understanding. I am powerful. I don't doubt you. But show me the understanding and I see how far the power can go. My understanding is limited to the healing ministry. That is the only area you will see the power of God. You will continue to fast and more power will come. But it will be directed towards that area. The day you learn the economic principle of the kingdom, you will see the power released there. It was always there, but your bankruptcy of understanding trapped it. Please get what I'm teaching you. It will not do us much to just pray and pray and do impartation. And then the area where you are trusting God for, maybe it's area of speed and promotion. 
But the only spiritual understanding you have is for restoration. The more you pray, the more you see things being restored. But promotion, you will not get it. And you wonder, God, can't you promote? He says, my power wants to move to the area of your promotion. But the host call understanding that would direct it is barren, unfruitful. And where that light came from was the hiding place of his power. I learned this in life and it changed my life. There were things I didn't know. And I didn't see the power of God in those areas. And for a long time, I would pray and fast and say, God, why? Until the Lord granted me understanding to know that the issue was not more power. The issue was the bankruptcy of spiritual enlightenment that will give it more capacity. Is God speaking to you? Imagine with me an octopus, right? That sea creature with many channels. That's how God wants your understanding to be. His divine power should not only touch your finances alone. It should not only touch this aspect. Listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I believe with all my heart that there is enough power and grace to produce what you are looking for. Connect that power through your understanding to the problem you are looking for solution from. If what you want is restoration, then use the understanding of the prophetic to channel the power of God to that direction. If you keep praying and God has mercy on you, he will bring a prophet to help you. That's his way of having mercy on you. But he will not violate the system allocated for that breakthrough. Are we together? You want to be promoted in a job. The power of God will not only flow through favor. It will flow through competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business. Not prayerful in his business. Diligent in his business. He says she shall stand before kings. There is power in diligence. So when you become diligent, a dimension of God's power that never flowed will now start flowing through diligence. If you understand what I'm sharing tonight, you will see the knowledge dimension, the understanding dimension of the power of God. Otherwise, there is no need for knowledge when the anointing comes. What then is the value of spiritual enlightenment? If the anointing just generically solves problems. Why should you anoint me with oil? Then I study the Bible again. What am I looking for? I know what I'm looking for. I'm giving that grace. Channels. Ah, Those who you call wonders. When you see them, they are not like an octopus. They are like an animal with many, many hosts. So almost every area of their life can be touched with understanding. And the power of God. You see possibilities. That's what we came to do tonight. First, to receive more grace. But second, to say, Lord, this side has received your anointing. But this side, I'm trying to get this thing there. It's not working. What is the mystery that channels the power of God to this other area? Naaman was the king and the captain of the Syrian army. He was a valiant man. His discipline and diligence as a military man allowed certain levels of might to flow. But, but, if he knew that the prophetic would solve his problem, he would not be a leper till that time. It was because there was an information he did not know that kept him there. So God used a small slave girl to say, sir, there is a way out of this. Ah, Tell somebody there is a way. Please prophesy to someone, say there is a way. It may not yet be captured in your curriculum of knowledge, but there is a way. There is a way. Do not use your limitation to conclude that God cannot move in that area. Because he can. Because he can. Because he can. Everything God says, listen to me, listen to me. 
when he releases it, the spirit of revelation will take that prophecy and the power in it and ensure that you have the understanding that connects you to that prophecy. This is how it works. This is how it works. So the more spiritually enlightened I am, it is not the enlightenment that produces result. The enlightenment activates my mind and gives the power of God a channel to flow through. Listen to me. Medical people will tell us many times that when a part of the body is beginning to deteriorate, sometimes it could be that there was a pinched nerve. Is that true? Sometimes it could be that something happened that is not allowing blood to flow because the distribution is that blood should flow all over your body. But for some reason, the heart is still pumping blood. But something may happen to your vein or your artery or something and just try to create an interference, an inhibition. And for a long time, a part of your body will not receive the supply of oxygen and blood. And as a result, it begins to die. The heart is pumping, but that leg is dying. So it is the doctor's assignment through his knowledge to now create a system. And sometimes the relief is instant. Hmm. This is how it works. We went for a crusade many years ago. Anointed but poor. Yet his divine power was on us. That power was healing the sick but the police station was waiting for us. Are we together? Couldn't the power stop the police station? It could. Except that the knowledge we needed to allow it get to our finances, it was not there. And then by the mercies of God, he brought that side. Look, when light comes to you, it's a miracle. When light comes to you, now the power of God can flow through you. Let me tell you why certain people's results become very powerful. There are many people who may not have the level of anointing yet, but while they are waiting, they continue to get vast knowledge. It's like you are preparing the host in advance. The day that anointing comes, miracles in different areas because they were prepared. I've not met a man of God that can anoint me, but while I wait, what is the key to wealth? While I wait, what is the key to speed? While I wait, so everything is prepared, waiting for the oil to come. Why did he tell the woman, borrow vessels? Borrow many. Borrow a financial vessel. Borrow a speed vessel. Borrow a, a favor vessel. Borrow a restoration vessel. If you return, pour the oil. The oil will come on the speed vessel. The oil will come on this vessel. You see, and when there was no more vessel, the oil not died, not changed, not became powerless. The oil limited by the containers. The prophet saw the woman. He said, your husband didn't know what this oil could do. Even as a prophet and he died. You can be a prophet, but when you don't have vessels, you can die. Please tell me we are going to pray. I came with a word from God to tell you. By the grace of God, this is a place of God's power. But power just resting. You can roll from that door to that door. And the power will be there. And the only channel you gave that power was your prayer life. So you will see increased prayer. You are praying again like never before. And you are saying, but God... Thank you for the grace for prayer. But I said that I want something in my family. And then you fast again. And then more prayer comes. And then when God wants to help you. He will do to you what he did to Martha. Sit down. And listen. Look at how Jesus. Do you know Jesus did not do an impartation service every day. But he did a teaching service. His entire training was 99% teaching. And then one day, when they had created channels, he said, now wait, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost came on them, they prophesied, there was word of knowledge, there was salvation, there was healing, because the channels were ready. My son, give me your heart and observe my ways. 
observe my ways. Observe why two people were anointed and yet they could not manifest certain possibilities. This kingdom works through knowledge. The knowledge is not a charm. The dynamics of the operation is that every result is governed by his divine power. But his divine power flows through the host of understanding. The prophets desire to know some things. The power that was on them was enough to help them do certain things. But they were denied. God stopped them and limited them by hiding certain levels of knowledge. So the anointing could not take them far to see some things. That's why God says we are a chosen generation. In other words, people, the prophets long to see these things. They had the power, but the understanding that will allow the power to take them that far was not there. Man of God, my church is not growing. Yet people come and get healed and blessed through my life and they leave me. It is because his divine power is walking through the dimension of understanding you have that allows for healing and allows for deliverance. But there is something about the grace that keeps that you do not know. All that you have given me, I have kept. By what mystery did he keep them? And none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture may be fulfilled. There is a grace that keeps. If you have it, you will keep money. If you have it, you will keep children. If you have it, you will keep blessings. If you do not know the mystery that keeps things, you will have them and lose them. You can have breakthrough and lose breakthrough. You can have good things and leave them. Apostle, every time they pray, I get the result. But it leaves after two weeks. I know what is wrong. His divine power is still there. But there is an understanding you need to know about how things can be kept. Let me tell you how you keep things in the kingdom. You hand them over to God. When you hand over things to God, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. You can't keep that which is committed to you by your power. If they give you a bag of gold, you are running to Central Bank tomorrow. Whether the road is, is busy or not, you will smuggle your gold and run regardless of weather. CB and keep it for me. I trust my God, but not with respect to this gold. Please understand what I teach you. Our time is gone, but we are going to pray. For many years, I continue to ask, why are anointed people limited? I got one of the revelations that the anointing is in decrees and levels. And the anointing, just like currency, can only purchase the spiritual realities below its value. Every level of grace has a spiritual value akin to money. What one million will do is not what hundred thousand will do. If what you have is hundred thousand, you can only buy things from hundred thousand and below. If it's a card, you will not even buy hundred thousand. You must keep something small. So if all the anointing you have is to help people be healed, some can have ten problems. Come, Sam. Look at this. Please um, sit down. We're going to pray. Let me teach you something. Let me have your attention. Please look. You have to get this thing I'm teaching you now. Look at this. Sam has headache. Just as an, an example. Sam has headache. Are we together? Poverty. Number two. Number three. Delay. Are we together? Number four is what? Huh? Demonic oppression. Now, I come as a man of God. Sam lists all these problems. When I lay hands on Sam, watch this now. The level of anointing I have will scan through the problems and only the situations that are below the level of anointing that will be solved. He may fall, 
But you will find out that when he rises up, only headache will be healed. The rest will not be touched because the level of grace. Anointing is not anointing. It's a lie. Go and read your Bible. How God anointed. Not just that he anointed. So the level of the anointing can make your challenges relative or otherwise. I used to think anointing is anointing. It just came from the Holy Spirit. Not so, sir. Not so. There are levels, there are dimensions of the anointing. And then when I grow further, I can now come to Sam again. And I say, Sam, what couldn't I solve last year? He says, sir, I listed five cases. Only headache went. I said, well, I've come back with an upgrade. Let's try it again. I lay hands on Sam and suddenly a miracle alert will enter. And all this will enter. But that delay will not be solved. So you are a blessing when you are very anointed. So anointed that most of the cases that come to you, there is grace to solve it. Listen, let me tell you this. I can tell you this from experience as a man of God. There are, there are situations I know that the grace that God has put on my life is by far higher than that situation. That's why when I see people come with that thing, I don't even bother wasting time to pray for them. I say, go, it's done. It's within the liberty of my grace to produce that solution. But there are cases that when I see sometimes, I know that I've met a match for my grace. And I need to return back to the secret place. Because when God wants to lift you, he brings people with serious issues. Lord, add church members. Then he brings someone deaf on both ears and who is not even smelling. He stands before you. Can you hear? No, even small, not at all. You pray for him. He falls down. He wakes up richer, but not healed. Because the grace that you released was for wealth. Are you seeing why balance is powerful? It's true. I used to wonder why Kenneth Hagin will have meetings, 21 day stretch, and sick people will come. Sometimes he will not pray for some. He will leave them like that. He will continue studying and growing. One day, he will come back and say, you, come. And that will be it. I now know what he was doing. He was honest with himself. He had a system of gauging. Was it not, was it not Jesus and even the disciples that will discern whether this situation is doable by me? If it was not doable, they would go and call certain apostles. They were not ashamed. When it has to do with this one, <clears throat> I'm still growing. Please, come. So the disciples pray for an epileptic patient in the name of Jesus. And nothing happened. And Jesus came and said, I know the problem. Two problems. One, the level of anointing is not there. Almost not there. Number two, your spiritual understanding. Because you saw me heal the sick effortlessly. I casted out the devil out of the gathering. But this kind goeth not. He was introducing them. That there is a level where prayer and fasting will introduce a kind of power to you. That will help you do certain things. I've shared a revelation with you. That every time people fast and pray. It's like a spiritual energy. It's like fire that rises from within them. Do you know what that fire does? I will tell you. When a spirit leaves a man, it goes through desert regions. It's in your Bible, isn't it? And when it goes through desert regions, it becomes uncomfortable because a desert is a hot place. And it compares the desert to the body it left. If the body is colder than the desert, it will prefer to return back to the body. So that when a man begins to engage spiritual energy 
and that fire burns within you by yourself that spirit will leave you the bible lets us know that anything in the similitude of fire is uncomfortable for spirits that's why they like water that's why water is a major part of their habitation because there is restfulness there he makes me lie down in still waters We're going to pray. The power of the Holy Ghost is upon you. But this night we must cry for understanding. 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 We'll pray for higher dimensions of power, but superior dimensions of sight and understanding. Rise up on your feet, please. Thank the Lord for the word you just heard tonight. Lift your voice and thank him. Lift your voice and give him praise. We are praying. Is someone lifting their voices? I found my way. To a higher level found my way greater power if someone pray please lift your voice and pray shala pragadiba la Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Yeah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say, Nanaka. Fill this temple We wait on you. illumination a comprehension of your methodologies tired of guessing tired of shadow boxing tired of hoping are you praying shalabarakatos we are still praying look up please hallelujah listen mention the area where you need a miracle 
and say lord what is the understanding that connects your power to that area lift your voice and pray mention the area lord i desire breakthrough i desire a job i desire the spirit of revelation i desire increase in ministry what is the mystery what is the key that will allow your power to be channeled in that area please pray show me oh god like naaman a great captain of the syrian army but what is the cure for this leprosy revealed to me by your spirit there is a way there is a way there is a way there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. believers if you're a pastor here listen to me that is why communion service is not powerful because most people think it's about sobo and wafa so they said eat the bread and swallow the, the drink and then they smile no when you understand the power you will not even be able to hold the communion set understanding they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There is more to it. You have done it the way you saw it. There is more to it. We are still going to pray. Father, I'm crying to you. Let my eyes draw a line between your word, my eyes, and my situation. Connect something. Show me a key. Connect a mystery. By the Spirit. I need speed in my life. Open down my eyes. I need restoration in my life. Open down my eyes. I don't doubt your power. My understanding is limiting your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm be very sensitive. Listen. This is why many of you, even after an encounter, nothing happens. Then you go and buy some books and sit with them and then get up and see results. No new impartation happened. In that book, there was a new host that connected a new channel for the power to flow. 
for a long time you've been anointed but you wonder why good things leave you and then suddenly the law of honor comes to you you learn that honor is a law and that when you honor graces it gives you access from the lens of that understanding you will start seeing the power that brings favor flow i don't have to pray for you for fresh grace for favor your understanding connected you the power is at the mercy of which channel of understanding will allow me flow it's not a different power that brings healing that is a different power that brings miracles is the same divine power but the system of operation is what makes the difference hallelujah understanding these are mysteries about the anointing that are found by the spirit questions that i asked for many years what is the relationship between knowledge and understanding because some people choose knowledge the word, the word. Other people choose anointing, power. And I said, Lord, there, there is confusion here. I need you. And God said, no, there's no confusion, sir. The word gives you understanding. The power flows through your understanding. Representing the might of Jesus in the face of your situations. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Prayer point number two. Some of you have understanding already. But like something can happen from the water board. How many of you have seen that because your house is uphill, even when they bring water, have you seen that kind of thing? You open, you turn the knob to the last, and it just comes in droplets, and you want to bath, you are in a hurry. So there is something that can help you buy a pumping machine and interface it between water board and your house. And when you put that machine and switch it on, suddenly, the water can even enjoy your head because of the speed. That's what many of us need to do. A multiplication of the same thing. That I have it all, but Lord, a higher dimension. I have a 1,000 naira worth of anointing, but I have a 1 million naira worth of problem. Upgrade the grace. Upgrade the grace. Lift your voice and pray. There's no doubt, Lord, I'm a prophet, but upgrade the grace. I've received the anointing for well, but upgrade the anointing, a higher measure. Please pray. Believe in what you are praying and pray. Pray. Thou anointed my head with oil. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup run it over. My cup run it over. Shelamarakata bradegetich. Embradegetegetegete. Rakata barando shabra dekete, a higher level of grace, a higher level of anointing, a higher investment of spiritual power for signs, for wonders, extraordinary results, strange results. Haro Sagabaranda Kata Elakata Pragata Kato Shada Bradias Acts Chapter Nineteen From verse 11. There are a class of miracles. Called special miracles. A miracle in itself is spectacular. But there are miracles. Called special miracles. 
and they are wrought by the hands of men, not angels. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Read on. So that from his body, this is what makes it special. Because the rule is that you have to make contact with the sick. And now from his body were brought to the sick. You had our mother's testimony. Handkerchiefs and aprons and diseases departed. When your handkerchief has a voice, it's a special miracle. Because a handkerchief is not a living thing. Special miracles. It is not everyday anointing that produces special miracles. No. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled. In Acts chapter 4, they were filled. Father, I have seen yesterday's glory. I have seen yesterday's results. But before this fast ends, Lord, shift me to a new level of anointing. I have prophesied. I have seen the sick healed. I spoke to people and their lives changed. A higher dimension. Is someone praying? A higher dimension. I've seen the grace for wealth, but a higher dimension. I've seen the revelatory gifts, the revelatory grace, but a higher dimension. I have seen influence and honor, but a higher dimension. Someone pray. Someone pray. Pray, don't be tired. Hallelujah. Let me share with you something. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We're rounding up. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Please give us from verse 8. We're reading three verses. 8 to 10. For this thing. Listen carefully. I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Let's see how God answered this prayer. This is the prayer of a man who was tired of his situation. Listen to how God is answering a man's prayer. He did his best to handle that situation in his strength. And he could not handle it. Now he's asking God for assistance. And God says, my grace is sufficient. But you don't know how it works. My grace is sufficient. But you don't know how it works. If it is strength you want, then it must be in exchange for weakness. If there is no darkness, Nepa is useless. Listen to me. Very, very powerful. If there are no sick people, Dr. Emeka is not needed. Are we together? If you are not thirsty, even if there is a bag, a drum of pure water here, it doesn't matter to you. So he says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Let me tell you what this happens. It's a mystery. Every time a human being becomes weak, something starts happening to the power of God coming to that direction. Listen carefully. Weakness is powerful because it attracts the strength of God. 
So when you set your soul to fast, as your body begins to become weak, the same spirit, there is something about your weakness that is calling the power of God. When Jesus stayed for 40 days, the weaker his body, the more the Holy Spirit saw the need to stay. It's a deep spiritual mystery. Jacob wanted a blessing and God looked at him from head to toe. There was no weakness. He said, how do I help you? I have to touch something. There has to be weakness for my strength to be valuable. The treasure cannot be stored in golden vessels. The fact that the vessel is earthen makes the power comfortable so that the excellency of power might be of God. So when you set your soul to fast, God who allowed fasting knows what food does to the body. Listen carefully. If you don't have this revelation, you will not understand what you are doing tonight. Why are you doing a marathon fast that from Wednesday you are not eating down till Friday? Do you want to kill yourself? What kind of nonsense is this they say? You watch what happens. There is a level you will get to where you will almost want to collapse. Then watch what happens. Suddenly, like the eagle, you will pray and you will be tired. Have you not noticed that there is a switch every time? When you are weak, you want to pray. You plan to pray for three hours. After seven minutes, you are tired. You don't even know how this will happen. But you continue and continue and continue later an agency takes over you and even three hours you can't finish listen listen the power of god hardly starts things he allows you to start and then the power comes and takes you to the flight that's what happens these are very deep spiritual mysteries so these nights that you are not eating now, your body is already frustrated. There is a level of life and health that the body must have for the mind to work. It's true. When you fast, your mind also is subject to fasting. Because your mind feeds off the health of your body. That's why when you die, your mind does not work. So you set your soul to fast. Every time the nation of Israel were about to be overwhelmed by their enemies, they will keep their weapons down and declare a fast plus goats plus everything. While they are in sackcloth and ashes, the spirit of God comes through a prophet. This is what God is saying and victory comes. I besought the Lord thrice, take this away from me. And it seems like there is a strength in myself that is limiting the power of God. So I set my soul in the similitude of weakness through fasting. And suddenly his power comes and picks you up. Many of you will be surprised what will happen. It's not hunger, starvation. It's a mystery. That's why I said a joy must be set before you to receive the grace to endure. You're going to cry for grace. The grace that will keep you through. My brothers and my sisters, listen, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. If you don't learn this technology, you will break down in ministry. You see, when I left this place, I had a meeting till evening. It was when I was done just a few minutes to the program starting. Had to tidy up some other things before coming here. And I've been standing here. You have to learn to exchange your weakness. It's a technology you must learn. You are more powerful than you are. But until you are weak, you will not know. If a terrorist comes here right now and starts chasing everybody, you can run three days without food and you will not be hungry. That ability was always there. But there was a level of weakness that when your body how do I explain this now Holy Spirit just believe with me that subjecting you through this spiritual discipline is not a ritual of men my brothers and my sisters I hate the traditions of men 
and vain religion that has no power. We will never practice anything in this ministry that does not have power and spiritual significance. He won't stop till your strength looks like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop till my life looks like him. God is raising mighty man in this place. God is raising people of power in this place. Hey, hey. God is raising sons and daughters in this place. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till our lives look like Him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like Him. So when the fast is done, then you will see that your prayer request of 10 years comes in one day. And then you say, Lord, what happened? My strength. Your weakness called for my strength. Your weakness called for my strength. Why does the Bible call fasting humility? Because it's proof that you are weak. And so you call his strength. That they humble their souls in fasting. Lord, if you don't come to help me, I cannot help myself. He says, that's the language I want. Listen. Our fast officially ends tomorrow by one. And then we come for the miracle service. Fire will burn in this place tomorrow. That everything that has not been planted by our God, he must let us go. God declared that it is extraordinary fruitfulness. That is the grace that you must carry. There will be a strong impartation in this place. And God will shift us. You are in ministry. Come with your heart open and come rejoicing. Because things must change. Hallelujah. Whatever challenge, whatever has refused to bow, come with it. Come with it to Jesus. And let us see the power of his grace at work in our midst. Don't forget tonight's teaching. Understanding allows the power to flow to the area where the breakthrough is needed. And that you will need greater dimensions of spiritual power to purchase certain possibilities in the spirit. So let this be your prayer all through tonight. Just because you are weak does not mean you should snore yourself till morning till one. Find a corner even in your weakness. If you have to kneel, kneel. You are allowed to drink water. But please trust God for grace to wake up and pray. If you have a neighbor, you have a friend, tap the person. Say, in Jesus' name, your destiny is calling you. Wake up. Pray. The virgins slept and there was a call. And they didn't have the time to go and buy extra oil. And because of that, they were in trouble. You have to be alert. You have to pray. And listen for what he will say. There are certain things you cannot think about now. Your body is too weak to allow your mind to think it. So your spiritual focus is accurate. You can trust your hearing. The weakness in your body will not allow you to think of the cares of this world. You will be surprised. You try to think about it and see. Your mind will give up because the body is weak. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So you can focus and pray. And your mind will be stayed on Jesus. And you travel and push through till victory is established. Father, we give you praise tonight. We honor you and we love you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us your ways. The way of power. The way of the anointing. The way of strength. The way of grace. Lord, we decree and declare that we are determined for our profiting to be made manifest in this generation. We are not ashamed to obey you. 
We are not ashamed to be stretched until scripture is fulfilled in our lives. Father, I pray for your people. Let there be a supply of grace. Let our humanity not catch up with us tonight. In the name of Jesus, the strength to push through until tomorrow afternoon, we release it upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you.